Heavenly Father, Evening. I am Kit Skipper, and this is Carla Van Dyne, and I'm glad to be here tonight to speak and see some good students and <laughs> board members and and uh, Commander Provost. Just uh, we can't really direct uh, back, but we will direct you to council, uh, to staff. Uh, they're happy to meet with you uh, one on one and we explain that for you. Yeah, that we're, we can set that up uh, to do there. I'm sure they have an answer for you. Okay, but we can we can listen and but we can't really respond you know to you here tonight. But but we can definitely direct. Uh, staff to to get with you and and to be able to explain that for you or they'll we'll they'll contact you. you they'll they'll contact you. Okay. but thank you appreciate that good question <clears throat> anyone else on call the public see no one else at this time uh we'll come back to the next item on the agenda is special events uh we have some presentations that we'd like to give uh out uh don't see anybody in attendance tonight but we have a a plaque we'd like to give to Stephen Ashelman uh for the aviation advisory committee member we also have uh, a certificate of appreciation for Doug Ward for the parks and recreation advisory committee member Robert Hepner who uh served as the board of adjustments member from October 18th to April of 19 and to Pastor Steve Hare, who 
served on the Board of Adjustment member here from October 2005 to April 2019. We'll see that these guys receive these plaques, but we want to thank them for their service to the community. And next item we have is the consent calendar. Uh, is there any items on the consent calendar that need to be pulled or discussed separately? Council Member Alsop. Yeah, Mayor, I'd like to pull item F just for some clarification. Just okay. got a couple Item of F for clarification, that's fine. Uh, I'll go through the other items here. Uh, we have a item A, a proclamation of the mayor proclaiming the full support of participant in the census 2020. Item B, consideration of a commercial hangar lease operating agreement with Aero Products Component Service, uh, Shola Regional Airport. Item C, a consideration of approval of a sublease agreement between Guardian Flight LLC and Rim Country Holdings. Item D, consideration of a lease agreement for property located 280 East Tusa Clubs. And then item E, consideration of agreement for mutual use of facilities between the city of Sholo and Summit Healthcare. And item G, consideration of the minutes of the Sholo City Council. Need a motion for those items uh, of the consent calendar with the exception of item F. So moved. We have a motion by Council Member Leach, second by Vice Mayor. All those in favor? Any opposed? Did that pass seven to zero? This time we'll go to item F, uh, consideration of acceptance of Bison Golf, uh, golf Villas, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Justin, for coming up. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> the question I have is, you know, after reading everything and looking at uh, uh, all the paperwork that we that I read on and everything else, can you give us an explanation of what's really happening if we vote this thing on? Just uh, what what's going on with this? So when we vote, that we know what what's happening is, so everybody will know what's happening instead of just us. Uh, the concern of the developer is that as construction commences on that building <coughs> with construction traffic that there's a potential to damage the wall. Uh, and so what they are asking is that they not be required to complete that portion of the wall on Old Linden Road that is uh, currently <coughs> incomplete until such time as that building is done, uh, meaning they would not get a C of O on that portion of the building or that building until such time as that portion of the wall is completed. Um, they are also requesting uh, currently this building in the center is complete. Um, there are two proposed buildings north of that. Uh, neither one of those has been constructed yet. They're requesting to not build the wall on the north end until such time um, prior, let me back up, uh, to not build that wall uh, and that they would not get any building permits on either one of these two buildings north of the existing building until such time as that wall on the north uh, has been completed. So no building permit at all on either one of these buildings 
until the wall on the north is complete. Uh, no C of O at all until the uh, building, until the wall along Old Linden Road is complete. Uh, and the concern there again is potential damage to the wall during the course of construction. Uh, it is my understanding that there is a contract out on uh, at least one of these buildings on the north, uh, which would mean that that wall to the north needs to be built pretty quick, uh, according to that understanding. So, uh, and that's that a address block wall. the block wall. Yeah, it's required to be a wall, and I'm paraphrasing. Uh, from memory, so please, little latitude appreciated. Um, the wall on the north is required to be of uh, similar uh, composition and materials as the wall that already exists along Old Linden, so a block wall. So, uh, okay, those last houses, those last ones that you're showing uh, going down 36, okay, all those two there. Okay, you're talking about a wall on the north side of that, but what about along 36? Uh, there was no wall required along 36. There's no wall required along 36. Okay. The one that's along Old Linden Road, if you're not going to put that wall up there, is is it the reason, one of the reasons is to have more access to get in or to build that? And if it is, is it, uh, are we given permission to uh, to come off of the Old Linden Road there? Or does that, or do they automatically have okay to go off Old Linden Road? Um, the, the primary concern is the potential to damage the wall. Um, there may be, just because of the location of this building, it is kind of landlocked, to be honest with you. Uh, it does not abut the parking area. There may be times when equipment does need to come off of Old Linden. There's not uh, an actual restriction against that. Obviously, it's something we'd like to limit as much as possible, just because of the traffic patterns on Old Linden. But if there's a piece of equipment that has to get in to set a truss or something like that, I mean, it, it's got to get in from a practical yeah. standpoint. So, again, try to limit that as much as possible, recognizing that there may be times that you know, there's really no other choice. Yeah, it's just a safety issue of that old linen roll, right? There's that little bend where you look once and there's nothing there, and you look again, it's right on top of you. So Absolutely, yes. For safety that. just reasons, I just kind of want. So that's, those are the questions I have. Thank you very much. I, Any questions? Just That's real quick. Reach. So we're accepting this um, for the two-year warranty. Do we do that to every building? Is that what you're doing here? The warranty is initiated on the public infrastructure. Uh, in this case, this development is, is a pretty classic example of what we would call an infill, meaning the majority of the public infrastructure was already in place. The water lines mm. were in place. The sewer lines were in place. There is a small portion of the water line. Uh, it ran along through this portion of the property, and they actually had to reroute it around a corner of the building uh, in order to facilitate the construction of that. So really, when we're talking about the warranty, we're talking about a piece of water pipe that really isn't much longer than what, how this room is wide. Every, everything else was already in place. <laughs> Didn't they put some ribbon curb out on the road and stuff there? Right. The roadway, that's part of the warranty. Right so. Any other uh, council member? Kenton? No, go ahead if you have a question. Council, one more to call it. I was just wondering how they're accessing the buildings. Um, Is that little parking spaces? I'm going to go here. Well, actually... I apologize. I wish I had one. Hindsight being what it is, I wish I had one that was zoomed in a little bit better. Um, so the access to the property is off of 36 Drive. That is the only access. There is no access uh, off of Old Linden Road, uh, except for the potential, as we discussed earlier, for some very limited temporary construction access. Uh, there is a parking lot that has been installed uh, along the east side of these buildings, between the buildings and uh, 36 Drive. Uh, you'll also notice as you drive by that there are some garages that have already been constructed. So there's a mix of surface parking uh, as well as garage type parking uh, within those. And that the garages will continue to be developed as the units are developed. Any other questions? <laughs> Council Member Crittenden. I move to approve the consent calendar, including 7F. Second. Already approved the consent calendar. Just uh, make your motion to approve uh, 7F uh, 
Okay, I move to calendar. approve 7F on the consent calendar. Thank you. And we have a motion or second by Council Member Kelly. Any other discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? See that pass seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Next item we have is item 8A of new business. Uh, consideration of applications submitted by James Applegate on behalf of the Shello Chamber of Commerce for special event liquor license for 16th annual Shello Days on June 7th, 8th, and 9th, 2019 at Frontier Fields. Uh, Tamara Reedhead. Thank you, Mayor. James Applegate, representing the Shello Chamber of Commerce, submitted an application for a special event liquor license for the 16th annual Shello Days at Frontier Fields scheduled for June 7th, 8th, and 9th. The license will allow the Chamber of Commerce to sell alcohol during the event. There is an existing six-foot chain-link fence surrounding Frontier Fields where the alcohol will be sold and consumed. The Chamber will institute a one-beer purchase per purchase policy this year as recommended by the Police Department and post signage stating the same. This will minimize the possibility of purchasing alcohol for others. One entrance exit gate will be open for participants to enter and leave the area and will be manned by at least two and up to four security personnel provided by the Arizona Rangers to ensure no alcoholic beverages enter or leave the fenced in premises. When available, the Rangers will roam the field to provide additional security. The northwest corner of Frontier Fields will house the kids zone and no alcohol will be allowed in that area. The police department, the Shola Police Department, performed a background check on the applicant and found nothing that would preclude approval of this special event liquor license. The application and action taken by the council will be forwarded to the Department of Liquor Licenses and Control. Unlike regular liquor licenses, the council's decision is final for this application. Any questions, comments? I'm just going to uh, just be careful because last year I think he had two incidences uh, with shallow days of, of over consumption a little bit when we want to, you know, try to protect against that. Yes, Mayor, which is why we put in the new policies. Side of it. Look for a motion. Or is there anything uh, we have any special here? We don't have a hearing or anything, right? Yeah. Look for a motion. Council Member Kenton. I move to approve the application submitted by James Applegate for a special event liquor license for the 16th annual Sholo Days on June 7th, 8th, and 9th at Frontier Fields, Sholo, Arizona. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor. Any discussion? <clears throat> All for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? <clears throat> See that pass six to one. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You, Council Mayor. Next item we have is item 8B, change order for consideration of the approval of contract change order number two, increasing the construction costs for Shola Regional Airport runway 0624 rehabilitation project. Mr. Barr. Good evening, council and mayor. Thank you. On June 5th, 2018, the City Council authorized the Mayor to sign the grant to fund the runway 624 rehabilitation project in an amount not to exceed $2,036,955.35. Soon after construction began, the contractor encountered unforeseen conditions <clears throat> excuse me, that resulted in additional cost of $150,878. Excuse me, and nine cents for the project and change order number one. Uh, the council approved change order one at the February 19 council meeting. An additional $91,260 cost related to the change conditions was submitted at a later date for a second change order. The second change order had to be reviewed and approved separately from change order one by the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. FAA staff has approved change order two and will pay 95% of the approved total amount of $91,260. Subsequent to this council approving 
Change Order 1 is the Arizona Department of Transportation, ADOT, agreed to pay a portion of Change Order 1 in the amount of $2,315.50. With additional funding from ADOT, the city share for Change Order 1 was reduced from $7,543.90 to $5,228.40. The city's 5% share for Change Order 2 is $4,563 bringing the city's portion for both change orders to $9,791.40 for a total project cost to the city of $60,715.28. The total cost to the city for this project is still significantly under the original budget amount of $93,125. Staff recommends the council approve the contract change order number two for additional construction costs for runway 624 rehabilitation project at the Sholo Regional Airport in an amount not to exceed $91,260 with the city's cost share or change order two not exceeding $4,563. All right, is there any questions on that? Yes. Councilmember Leach. Um, now say that in layman's terms. So it's going to cost us 4000 to get 91 or nine. Is that what you're saying? It'll cost us, uh, that's right, 5% of that, which is 4563 And the FAA is paying 86697 And I can tell you the reason I'm not a fan of any kind of change orders. This one, of course, is pretty easy, but a lot of these contractors will come in there and bid it and then know that they're going to change it later just to be the lowest bid. So I watch out for that. This, this isn't that way, but yeah, I'm good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Councilwoman Kagavis? How close are we to be having the project completed? Um, it is, the runway's finished and it's open. Uh, right now, there's a little bit of discussion on some of the, the paint that was done on the runway, the markings. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't done exactly to design and the specs that the FAA had asked. Um, Actually, as of just recently, the FAA decided they would approve what was there and weren't going to require us to fix it. Uh, but we still have to give the contractor the chance to come and fix it because if it's not done right, uh, we're not going to probably give them 100% pay. And that, that's still under discussion right now. So we're not exactly sure where that is. Any other questions, comments? I'll look for a motion. Councilwoman Kukavis. I move to approve contract change order number two to increase the construction construction costs for the Shola Regional Airport runway 0624 rehabilitation project from two million one hundred eighty seven thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars and forty four cents to two million two hundred seventy nine thousand ninety three dollars and forty four cents with the city share of the co this cost not to exceed four thousand five hundred sixty three dollars. Almost more expensive to write that than it is to improve it, isn't it? <laughs> Second by Council Member Lee. Any other discussion? I mean, yeah. Okay. Call for the vote. All those in favor? <clears throat> Any opposed? See that pass seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to shout out here that it's the 50th anniversary of Municipal Clerks Week, and we have two great city clerks. And so, Tamara Reedhead and Rachel Hall, thank you for what you guys do. 50 years, you're not even on the job that long, but <laughs> you, know, you might be by the time you get done here. Right? But no, we want to acknowledge that we got great clerks in the city of Shalo, and thank you guys for what you do. It's great. <clears throat> Next item, we got a summary of current events. Any council members uh, wishing to talk on, on current events? Council Member Leach. Uh, I just want to thank everybody that came out to the 66th annual um, city anniversary party and the seventh annual barbecue throwdown the city staff if you ever put an event on that the city's running they, they these guys and people do an amazing job um all we get all week and i i got to babysit 50 teams out there 45 teams out there and that's all you hear is what a great staff we have they pick up their trash they they do everything for them but it, i think it was a great success <clears throat> carrie and her group at parks and rec they just do an outstanding job and if you missed it Next year, it's going to be the same weekend, first, first weekend in May 2020. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, Councilmember Leach, and, and putting and organizing and working on that for the council, too, and for the city. 
appreciate your efforts. Uh, Councilwoman Kakavas. Um, last night, uh, Councilman Crittenton and the mayor and I attended the um, teen court graduation with uh, City Manager Mooter, and it was just really gratifying to see the growth of our uh, youth in this community and the work that our uh, leaders do. Uh, we appreciate Judge Patterson for all the work she's done on that project, and it really prevents a lot of um, kids going astray. So. Thank you for your work on that. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to attend a few meetings this last month. One was the Meals on Wheels. Uh, we uh, starting to get a little busy with people coming back up, and uh, we have a lot of good donations uh, from different uh, communities, uh, businesses. And so we just wanted to thank everybody that's been helping us and sponsor the Meals on Wheels program here in the city of Sholo. Also attended uh, a Main Street board meeting where we're getting ready to beautify the corner here on 9th Street and the Dusa Clubs. So uh, hopefully within the next few months, you'll start seeing some um, movement on that and make that thing look and better. So, and the last thing was I attended a, uh, a White Mountain um, um, Safe House um, banquet uh, last week or two weeks ago, and, and I had a great time there, and they raised a lot of money to help battered women and uh, uh, hopefully that uh, is going to help people out that are in the dire needs for uh, some protection and stuff like that. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other council members? I just want to thank the citizens and the staff for the work they put forth in uh, the day of service that we had here. Uh, last couple of weeks, I was able to do some work at the high school. We had some youth that showed up and was able to paint some inside and outside of some buildings and do some landscaping. We appreciate those that were in attendance for that as well. We have a great community, a great city. It's uh, becoming uh, springtime, summertime, so great to see a little bit of rain today to soften some of the fire dangers and stuff. Every little bit helps. It's great to get rain in May, so great blessing. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple items here. As I mentioned earlier in the meeting, our 21st annual beautification program called Project Clean Sweep um, kicks off mid-May and runs into June. Shola residents can dump green waste for free for two weeks at Dirty Deeds Green Waste, beginning Monday through Saturday, May 13th through May 18th, and again from May 20th to May 25th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's at the Dirty Deeds, Dirty Deeds Green Waste site. In June, we have a bulky item pickup on Monday, June 3rd through Friday, June 7th. Citizens can haul debris for free, also haul debris for free to Lone Pine Transfer Station Monday, June 3rd through Saturday, June 8th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, they'll close from noon to 1230 for lunch at the transfer station, but they'll um, be open until 4 on Saturday. We have a flyer with detailed information that was distributed with our utility bills that went out in the last couple of days. And we also have extra flyers at the City Hall, the Library, and the Aquatic Center. So if you need more information on that, you can call 532-4000. Registration's open for the May 5th, uh, until May 15th for the Memorial Day Softball Tournament, which we held May or Saturday, May 25th, and Monday, May 27th. And in public works projects, there are several main and um, sewer main and water line projects around the city. One in particular that um, has got a lot of attention is the sewer main extension project on the west side of White Mountain Road. That is nearing completion and should be finalized in the next couple of weeks. And again, we appreciate the patience as we improve the city and make improvements around on our different streets and water and sewer systems. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Council Member Leach. Just real quick, I want to encourage everybody to use some of that services to clean their yards. It's pretty nice that the city cares enough about our community that we have these free pickups because we, you know, you can be cited if your yard looks like a junkyard, but it's pretty nice that we offer this service. So I just encourage everybody to use it. I think it's pretty, you don't see too many communities anywhere that offer a service like that free of charge. So I think everybody should take advantage of that before it stops. You never know. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, we just want to remind everybody uh, we do have a joint uh, council meeting tomorrow night with Pine Top Lakeside and our other meetings that are scheduled currently. Okay, uh, seeing no other business, I'll adjourn this meeting. <laughs>